I, I trained in real life yesterday for the first time in a very long time. And I'm, I'm, I'm quite stiff. <laughs> yeah. How did you feel uh, the change from ETT to, to much, real life? Much, much better than before. So before, because also I was using glasses in VR and in real life, I, I play with contacts. I couldn't even hit the ball, right? So I was surfing like this <laughs> in September. And now seven months of no playing and my serves are all good. I could really spin up the ball well with a lot of spin, mm -hmm. just my back end. In my back end, I expect the ball to stick much more because in this game, you can really grab it and let go. And in real life, it's like it goes down if you don't really uh, rub, like uh, brush okay. the ball better, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, I still won quite some matches and sets and stuff, so it was okay. But then now coming back today, I had the same but the opposite. So I had the trouble finding uh, <laughs> my strokes. Okay. Right. How's it been going with you? Oh, it, it's it been going very well. I trained yeah. a little bit to push uh, the pushes, backhand and forehand push, yeah. because I never used it before. And uh -huh. yeah, I like this stroke. It's useful, really. no? Yes, it's very useful. Yeah. All right. I also tried a little bit um, uh, to change my forehand. So, so to... How should I say? Um, a bit more over the ball, maybe, yeah. 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 Cool. All right, so so where do you feel you're having trouble now? Like, Sorry? after trying all this new stuff, where do you feel like you're having trouble now? Like, what's, what's, what's bothering you most when you play somebody? Yeah, it's difficult to say. I think, as you told me last time, one problem is that I haven't enough time on the backhand. Yeah. So if I have enough time, no problem. But if if um, if I do not have enough time, maybe it's too high or it goes to the net. I do not have the control over the ball. Right. But it's much better. But it's much better than before. Yeah. Okay. And you've been tr you've been training on shorter strokes in the backhand as well, no? Yes, I tried. I tried the, uh, with the ball launcher. Yeah. I tried to to, um, to to bring a ball to the backhand every uh, zero dot six seconds. So uh -huh. very fast okay. and so I do not have enough time for the for the whole stroke. Right, 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 and that works. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. So what I can say there as well, because in the ball launcher you get a ball that's like this, so it has top spin on it, right? So when it comes like kind of flat, like the AI would do, you might struggle a bit because then you have to go into the ball a bit more. So it's kind of a, a cheaty trick um, because it doesn't really help you. But if you catch it earlier, you know, if you catch it at the highest point or later, you kind of have to rush it to bring it back. But if you, if you catch it while it's still going up, you can use a little bit of the momentum. So if you're really late and you cannot make a big stroke, just catch it a bit earlier and then do a small stroke, but when it's still going up. Okay. So yeah, it could, could be even sooner. And then you have to imagine that the first ball goes there, right? And the next one there. So you're not really like, the best idea is that it's actually the next video that I'm working on is transition from forehand to backhand and back. So mm -hmm. when you're expecting it here and it goes there, like you won't have time to do the whole thing. So if you just catch it a bit earlier and then just guide it, it's not the best stroke, but it brings it on the table, right? Okay. So you just, uh, how do you say it? You kind of use what's on the ball already. So either I play like this and you just, you just push it back or mm -hmm. either I play a little bit like this, and then you, do, you just open your bat a bit more, right? And you play like this. So I'm just saying that like, that's, that's not what you should be doing in the end, because if you're fast enough, then Every ball is like this, but it's not realistic, yeah. right? Because you have you're quite close to the table and your back end is a bit slower. So also you might want to create some more space, but before you can go back, maybe you have to play a ball back and then catching it a little bit earlier and then, then, then taking a, a step back and then attacking might be easier for you. Okay. Right. So yeah, maybe I'll, I should uh, create a, a drill for you for that. You challenged me, right? Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna call in the ball launcher, and then uh, let's see if we can uh, figure something. 
something out. Yeah, this is nice. Okay, I'm just gonna come over to your side. Okay. Second. Just have to see that I put it in the right spot, more or less. So let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm just gonna check, because right now I have uh, mine loaded, which are left-handed. You're also left-handed. Yes. Yes, that's good. All right. So I can already show you a couple that are from the the new video. They're all mm. they're all based around this, this switching of sides. All right? Okay. So let me show you. Uh, where are we? Lesson four. Okay. And okay. So this first one is very, it's very simple. It's one forehand, one backhand. So it's to get you into a rhythm, you know, mm -hmm. just switch. Um, I'll just show you for a second. But you can already see, like, when I do my backhand, if I'm a bit late, I can still just, you know, I don't do much. I just do that, right? And on the forehand, you can do more. And then if you get better, you can add spin on top. But you can still do, you know, just kind of push. You can do that anywhere on the table. And it's not as aggressive. There's not as much spin, but it's on the table, right? And then when you get faster, you can you can add spin again, right? Go and try. So in the beginning, nice. <laughs> Yeah, so when you can predict where it goes, you're very strong. Very strong. Yeah. All right, try to play a little bit more calmly to see to see if you have calm strokes as well for when you don't have that much time. So try to play a little bit more flat, a little bit more like a drive. Okay. So not, not that much smaller stroke. Okay, okay, okay. Switching that, right? Because this, I think, you can, you can do at a faster speed. So the only thing that I could say is maybe when you really need to be fast, just keep the pedal up and don't let it drop at all, right? Mm -hmm. Like this, you're going to be very fast. You'll see in a, in a second when we do the faster drills. And then, yeah, like you said, what you were doing was good, but you're you're struggling with when it's faster than that, right? So I really liked your stroke. But uh, yeah, I think I think your issue is the in-between thing, right? Not the full attacks, but like the softer strokes where you're not totally sure what's in it. Mm -hmm. so let's look at the... So normally I do like a two forehand, two backhand as well, but I think you you already know how that goes. And that's more... Yeah. That's more... Um, how do you say it? To sometimes do a, a short one and then take a step back and then attack. But you, you already have that more or less down. So let's look at the next one. The next one is... Harder, so it's one forehand, one random, one backhand, one random, right? Okay. So two strokes, you don't know what they are, but you have, you always know that the first is there, second, the third is there, and then there's like a small pause, and then it's back to forehand, all right? Okay. So I will, I will show you for a second, just a second. So now, okay. This is the first one, first, second, backhand, all right. So forehand, random, backhand. Random. All right. Okay. So try that. See if you can get there. <laughs> you notice right away, right? Because you don't know exactly where it's going. It's much harder. So yeah. it's very good for you to train. So now this time, try to do what I what I just showed, and just keep your pedal above the table almost, and just kind of return the ball without doing much more. That's it. Yeah, yeah, it's not easy. This one's back end, random. Four end now, random, back end, random. Yeah. You have to get used to the ones that are not random as well to make it a bit easier. I have another drill which is totally random, so 
Good. Fore end. Random. Back end. Uh, you get into the. After a while, you get into the groove, you know? And then yeah. if you, you, you can still uh, miss one, that's it's normal. Nice, nice, nice. But you will start adapting to how to switch sides. You're doing better already. Good. All right, all right, all right. So I still have to drop. Is this is already one of the advanced drills. This is, uh, yeah, I'd say so. Yes. This before. Yeah. yeah. So, well, no, it's it's new, so it, it's not in uh, anything yet. So okay. what I would say in this case is just keep your paddle up and just look, keep it easy, right? Just bring it back. And then what you can do is after a while, try to finish the last ball, right? Yeah. But only if you see it clearly or the ones that you know where they're going. So that's what I would say. Keeping your pedal up will help you a lot. At least to bring the, the, the ball back. And if you have the time, take a step back and then you can attack, right? Okay. But your problem is when you're close to the table, you're trying to do like big strokes and mm -hmm. you're not getting back, right? And also you're dropping it here, so the ball's coming in. So all, all of that takes extra time. So if you just keep it up. Okay. And then you can try to go faster, but still with the paddle up and still mostly flat. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, just a second. Another thing I'm going to explain. I almost forgot to put in the video, but I'm going to. This is um, about relaxing your muscles. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be prepared, table tennis is very, is very complicated because in a lot of other sports, you want to make an effort, you put in all your energy and all your power and you can put tension on all your muscles. And that's the best mm -hmm. thing, sprint, it's full, full, full tension, right? If you want to play table tennis and you want to be fast, you need to be relaxed. Uh, I guess it's similar to boxing that way. So the idea is that you're relaxed until the moment of impact. And that's when you, in, in boxing, I think it's the same. The moment you, you hit, you tense up, right? Um, and mm -hmm. when you hit, oh, that's the moment where you just add a little bit more tension. But if you do that before, if you start to make a stroke and you're already gripping your pedal a lot and the ball comes here instead of there, it's going to be very hard to get there. But if you're relaxed, it's much easier to switch sides, right? Mm -hmm. I think, I don't know if I explained last time to try and... Um, hold the paddle very tightly and then try to move your wrist mm -hmm. and do it, do it loosely. And then you have way more range on your wrist. It's the same for your, the rest of your body. If the rest of your body is relaxed, you have more range, but you're also quicker to respond. So the, the thing that you can train on is to stay relaxed until you hit the ball, right? And even if that's too hard, just stay relaxed throughout. It's the easiest mm -hmm. way to stay and it's the same with your legs right don't try to tense them up too much because you're going to be stuck in the direction that you want to go that is like when you tense up your muscles it's good to, for one thing right so if the ball comes here and i want to hit it really hard tense up my muscles it's fine but you cannot tense up your muscles if you still want to change your direction mm -hmm. and you're going to be you're going to be late for sure so that's, uh, that's very important, but it's something that you really have to get used to. You have quite a fluid stroke, but I think it's probably a little bit stiff still. So try to loosen that up. Like I said, first, keep it a little bit above the table. That can be very loose. And then when you want to add something, just loosen up your wrist a little bit, just a little bit on top. Right? You don't have to do the whole thing yet. Just a little bit, a little bit. And then the ones where you do the whole thing is actually when the ball comes in a bit slower and you have more time, right? That's the idea. For the ones that you are close to the table, it doesn't make too much sense to make this big stroke. I mean, you can train for it to get ready for it, and you actually you actually already have it more or less. But there's a much higher risk, right? But if you yeah. see it quickly and it's slow and fast, and you, you know that you can get there, then it's perfectly fine. But for everything else, try to keep it a bit more compact. And uh, these strokes, the ones that you play a little bit more flat, if you want to give them a little bit more energy. Uh, use your body, right? So instead of hitting more, just use your body a little bit more, and it's gonna it's gonna give that extra extra little thing. Let's try to see. So if I do just to 
arm. This is just arm. And then with body. No, and, and, yeah, I still go in the wrong directions as well. Yeah. So you can't always look at me as a good example because I have very big strokes as well, right? So yeah. that's, that's, a, that's a weak point for me. But yeah, I think what you need because you have such a lot of space in your forehand, but your back end is so short. Just like I said, just having this very compact straight stroke is going to help you a lot. And then when you have the chance, you can spin. But just just being able to bring it back fast without <laughs> doing any motion, that's going to help for sure. All right. Um, so I can show you another one, which is, you could say the highest level, but it's, in some way it's easier than the last one. I'll show you. So it's, it's two random strokes with, with, a, with a bit of um, pause in between. That could be very useful for you as well. So the first one is, the first one is uh, like flat fast, and the second one you can try to finish if it goes okay. where you expect it to. So because you have a bit more time, you know. Mm -hmm. You can try, but I'm, I think I'm gonna play a little bit slower for you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So with, with these exercises, you will feel like you're training something that is very similar to the games you play, because you will miss in the same way that you do in the game. Right? So whenever you feel like it's going too fast, just make your strokes a bit smaller again. Right? Just mm -hmm. stay with your back off the table, and that's it. Right, that's it. Good. Yeah, the switch to the forehand can be hard for you. Because you're used to letting it drop, of course. <laughs> yeah, it's very hard. Yeah. All right. So what you see here as well, you see the weak point of catching your forehand late, right? Mm. Because you're playing to that side. You play here from a back end. If you could catch the ball here, it's easy. But if you let it drop here, it's a, it's a very big distance to get there, right? So yeah. if you play from here and then from here, it's fine. But from here and then here, you know, you have to twist your whole body to get there. So it's something to think of. Um, really, you should be able to do this one still. But if you're playing the short one and it comes fast to your forehand, you, you can try to do the same in your forehand, which is like kind of a flat stroke, just guiding the ball back, right? And it's not, it's not like that's the best stroke at all. But it's a good stroke until you get an opportunity to really finish, right? So let's see, because I, I say a lot of stuff, but all right. So you can try to watch the machine as well a little bit, because you can see it turn. Yeah. In real life, you can see your opponent's movements as well, right? Mm -hmm. So it's okay to use that information. You can see as well, if I need more time on my forehand as well, if I let it drop here, I'm yeah. way slower. Of course. But if I catch it there, you know, it's, it's easy enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. You can try just for a second again, see. Nice. So I don't really see a very big problem with the um, technique of your stroke. Is just using the right stroke at the right time. Yeah. Okay, just one more thing. I guess everybody does that a bit. So I see you do a back end and you watch where it goes. Yeah. And then you bring, then you bring your hand back, right? So like play the ball and bring your hand back down. Not not low, but here, right? So mm -hmm. play and it's here. Because now it's like you play and it's there. Yeah. If it was here, you have to do a whole mix of things. Yeah. 
right? So yeah. your body goes up and, and back down, mm -hmm. right? Um, let's, uh, you want to try that again or? Yes, please. Okay. Nice, better. And then, like I said, it's about being relaxed. So that whole motion of coming back, try to do it controlled. So if you notice that you have to expend too much force to stop your arm after doing your stroke, do your stroke a little bit lighter, right? So you don't have to tense up that much. As I said, it's a good way to, to still speed up your strokes. I think with my backhand, it's easier to, to move back, but, but with the forehand, I have the much more yeah. problem. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah. because my stroke goes much, uh, much too long. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's, yeah, it's normal. Like it's something that costs me a lot as well. So a lot of the time I do this, but too bad. So a lot of the time I'm like prepared for my back and it goes to my forehand and the first forehand I will just pass. Um, it's better than missing, <laughs> but I'm almost never ready to attack uh, yeah. because I have a big stroke too. Um, yeah, the only way to really get rid of that or to, to do better is footwork. You have to make sure that your body is in the right position and it's gonna mm. be much easier. Because if you're playing backhands, and then it comes to the forehand and you don't move your feet, but if you do move your feet, you know, that's the whole thing. Like if you can, everything becomes more stable and easier and less dependent on speed of your arm. So you have to do a small, you, you can do a smaller stroke if you can use more of your body, right? It's the same for the back end. You do smaller strokes, smaller strokes. You try to do it with your body. Let's, let's just see again. <laughs> it's all the same plates. <laughs> so, what can happen as well, what can help as well in the forehand is I, at least, at least that's what they say. Mm -hmm. uh, is this is good exercise. I like it. You follow you follow with your chest. Mm -hmm. So, like this, right? So the ball is in, in your forehand. Yeah. You just move a little bit and back, right? And that can help because right now what happens is the ball goes. Yeah, it's hard to explain. The ball passes you by. Mm -hmm. and like, your whole torso is like twisting to get there. So, um, well, the main thing is that you don't drop your arm because once you drop your arm, you're gonna try to find the ball here. So try to keep it up. And then like, if you do just arm, it's gonna be hard. But if you mm -hmm. move your torso and then your arm almost nothing, it's easier to get there, right? Yeah. So let's see. Teaching you, I'll, I'll probably get better at this as well. I don't know if uh, if you have two different grips for forehand and backhand. No, it's the same, I think. That's good. All right. Yeah. So um, that's what I always see, say to younger players as well. Like, keep your pedal up. Keep your pedal up. And that's very mm -hmm. important to be fast because once you drop it, you have to bring it back up. Yeah. Of course, it doesn't count when the ball is uh, with backspin. It's a bit different. Oof. It's fine to play if it's uh, flatter. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Second one, you have time, so if you want to take a bit more time, you can. It's going to be hard and when it switches to the deep forehand and the back end. I mean, it's a hard thing to train. So it's always going to, it's going to remain hard, but it's, it's good to work on it, right? So it's, it's normal that you miss, even at the highest levels, uh, you're going to keep missing those. So it's just about improving, not about doing everything perfect, right? Uh, all right. What else? I think, I think these exercises, they're going to, they're going to do you a lot of good. Um, so I have one more exercise in here as well. Maybe it's a bit too complicated. I don't know. Let's see. So it's, uh, this one is to help you because it starts first with a short push and then you have to spin up from backspin. 
and then there's two two random balls, right? Okay. So what that does is because the spin up it leaves your bat in a totally different position, right? So training mm -hmm. what to do how to get into position after that is very important as well. So you serve, you prepare, you attack, and what then? Ball comes back. You have to be ready for it. So that's the point of this exercise. So it's like a, a serve, then you have to open up, and then two fast balls, right? So the serve, I think the serve is random. I think the deep push is random as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then these are both random as well. So everything is random. Okay. This is like a, a full point almost, right? So mm -hmm. it can be very interesting to see. There you go. It's a little bit slower than the last one, but it's more complicated. Yeah. If you don't get to a ball, don't worry. Like, or you can just push it back if it's deep. In the beginning, you can just try to make it land, and then you can start from there. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, those balls are hard. They're very hard. So what this also does is, okay. All right, give me a second. So what this also does is it teaches you to to step into the table, and then get back. It's very important, right? So step in. You can attack. And then you have some space to do this, right? But it's very important to step in and out to create the space, right? Actually, a lot of the times I don't do it enough and I stay too close. Okay. Right. So I think what I saw just now as well is like you, you step in quite well, but you don't step out as much, right? So you don't have that much space to do this one. And to, to attack the backspin ball, um, I saw you try to do it very, very fast, like this, right? You can do it a little bit more controlled. So push, and then try to do something a little bit more controlled, right? So always when you come from backspin, it's okay to just spin up okay. with control. And then uh, actually it can give you a bit more time to get in position for the next one if you can do it not too fast, you know? That's a real player, of course. Good. Nice. Nice. So with the ball machine, you just always imagine that all the balls you play are in the table. Like it doesn't matter if you miss, just keep going. That's it. That's it. There you go. And of course, you have to pace yourself because I don't know too much. Yet, so. For example, with this is you're already doing a really good job. Yeah, you're already adapting very fast, but this is all random. So this is um, quite advanced. Right? Yeah. So what you can do is you can make some of the strokes random and other not, right? But the whole point of this, of course, is working on transfer and not knowing where the ball is coming. So in that sense, it might make sense to do the same, but just slower, right? So let's say we put the same but I change the time scale to like 30% lower. Let's see what that gives. Serve. Back. Give a lot more time now, all right? So yeah. you can always do that to get a feeling for it. Of course, the rhythm is not like a real point anymore, right? <laughs> But that happens, in, that happens in VR sometimes as well anyway, that your rhythm is broken because of lag or whatever, right? So it's, it's not, it's okay to sometimes slow it down because in here at least it can be realistic. It, it can still be normal that, you know, you're expecting a ball and then you have to do something with your body to stay because sometimes you're like in a rhythm 
you know? And then you're like waiting, right? <laughs> so there's something that maybe even when you're waiting, you can still kind of try to stay in motion, right? Something mm -hmm. you can try to do. You can train that as well. And here with lowering the time scale, seeing what you can do with the open space, how you position yourself better. And then you can start speeding that up, right? Because now you have a lot of time and you're waiting, but you don't have to mm -hmm. be waiting. Because the, the idea is in the end, when you're way faster, you play your ball, but then you reposition right away, right? Not just dropping your arm back down, but also your body, you're covering new angles. So that's something like if you play with a smaller time scale, it's something to think about. You, you look at the machine, but at the same time, you're trying to cover the angles that you know you can get, right? And then you can do that very slow, so you have a lot of time to get in position, or mm -hmm. you can do that very fast. Um, and uh, and I, always, <clears throat> I don't know if you wanted, like, how much uh, time you wanted to spend today. I don't know if we, if we talked about that. Uh, I I have at four o'clock, I will have a match. So I have time to five minutes before four. Yeah, no, it's up to you. It's up to you. So you can tell me when, uh, when we start. Um, all right. So and this was all transfer, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, working on, on shorter strokes, a little platter, keeping your arm up. And then the next thing, but that's something that you can do, like, like I said, when you do an exercise like this and you get the last ball, that's where you can try to go for the bigger strokes, right? Mm -hmm. um, but what, what, else, what else bothers you? Because this is, this is specific and it's going to be always hard, it's something you can work on. But how are your serves and stuff like that? Is that, is that going better? I think I'm, I'm satisfied. But uh, what, what I do not be able is uh, to make short serves. I can make um, spinny uh, side spin serves, back spin, top spin. It is okay, but I have some problems to make a short serve. Right, yeah, show me. Not a really a short serve. No, no, but you don't want that. So, like in this game, sometimes you want it because people are not positioned well, and then you just want it to be super short, right? So, the way you do that is just playing very soft. Mm -hmm. um, in real life, you could do, and, and here as well, you can start adding more spin, but the more motion you do, the more chance you have that the ball will just fly off a bit, a bit more. Doing that tomahawk is not that easy uh, to do it shorter, but the serve that you were doing that was bouncing the second time very close to the line, that's a perfect serve. Yeah. So in the game, s some people, they play through the table, right? But that's going to stop anyway because they're already testing that. But in real life, you can't do that. And then yeah. if the ball bounces here, second one here, the ball is on the highest point here. So if you want to flick, it's possible. But when you do it short, it's very easy, right? You can be over the ball, it's like almost a smash. So when you serve like this, very, very short against somebody who's at a higher level, they will just come in and yeah. uh, flick it, right? So if you want to stop those people, what you were doing was actually good. Second bounce, very close to the to the edge. So it can depend a bit on your battle settings as well, but the idea is that you, you do your motion as it is normal, and then you check mm -hmm. how far it goes, right? And then this was a bit too much. So then I, I choose to go more to the side and less forward, right? So what I noticed in real life, for example, is that I had a lot more space, so I could go much more forward and still have it bounce twice. Also, of course, choose the length of the table, right? Diagonal is much longer than this uh, thingy. So if you want to make sure um, you try to go on the diagonal, of course, you have to take into account the curve so it doesn't go out the sides. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I see you, like you hit it a little bit like this. But just like your back end, your back end, you really brush the ball well, but your surface is the same. So really just, if you really brush it, you'll see that it doesn't shoot off that much. If, if you just hit it, it's going to go a bit faster. But if you really brush, it's not going to, yeah, even more. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So it's just about getting that feeling. That's it. Mm -hmm. And then you can train on getting that lower, right? So right now, Right now, what you're doing is like, it's kind of bouncing straight up, like what I'm doing now as well. 
But in the end, the idea is that you touch it in the same way, but instead of do going all the way under, you go more to the side, for example, and then it doesn't bounce up that much, right? That's why a lot of people do pendulum to control it not going up too much and to keep it short. Yeah, that's too much of a hit still. So the thing is, you, you, you throw the ball here, and then you go towards the ball with your stroke. The idea is that you don't go towards it. it it's in... How do you say it? It's just it's just in the trajectory of of your your paddle. So you really purely brush it. You don't go against it. Just pure 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 brush. Even more. That's better. It's the same for the the tomahawk as well. Mm -hmm. uh, even though like it's it can be very useful to really go through it and make it go fast. You can also do it just just brush and I can keep it short, right? Mm -hmm. So what? it's better now than it was before. But like in real life, I can do it a bit better. So like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't feel too comfortable. I never tried it in real life. Because in, in real life, I go like this, right? But if I do this, I, I, I lose my balance <laughs> because I'm on the tip of my toes and I don't see everything like, yeah. It's a bit weird, but yeah, so it, like once you get this under control, everything like from pushes and slices and everything will be easier if you understand how you really, so you can also do it like this, right? Because mm -hmm. if you do this softer, like it's not, it's not really going anywhere, but you can really train yourself to really brush up the ball. And then it's basically the same thing, but that direction. Okay. Right. So something that even in real life you could you could train. So yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, you have to compensate. That's it. This can also teach you how to return side spin and stuff because that's basically it. If the ball is spinning like this, you have to cancel it out the other way, or mm -hmm. you have to go in the same direction at the same speed almost, right? Mm -hmm. The easiest way is to just cancel it out that way. So yeah, um, it's something that you can, for sure, you can, you can train with a stro with uh, the ones you have. Sometimes going more through the ball, sometimes pure brush, right? Mm -hmm. To have a little bit more variation. If you want to keep it short, pure brush for sure. Yeah. Because otherwise, like, if you put you can keep it short and, and put something more in it, but it's very, it's very hard. I've been looking at Chu Shin's serves, <laughs> and he does something like this. He, he pushes it down, and the first bounce is here. So he, he kind of cuts it, and for some reason, he can, manage, he can manage to make it come like here. Okay. Very short still, but he still hits it quite, quite heavy. It's, it's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. But it's, it's stuff that you can play with. So, but the first thing I would do is this, just try to really get a feeling for brushing under the ball. And then you can, you can start going more on the side. And then in the end, you're kind of lifting the ball on the back like this, right? And then you have like a spin serve. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, this I have to train because at the moment I do not have the feeling of, uh, feeling of brushing the ball. Yeah, so right now you're like, like this before it as well. So. You have to go for it. If you if you if you position yourself like this, right, it's much easier to go under the ball yep. because you can just use all this space in front of you to go mm -hmm. like this. That's why most most players they have all this space. Their legs are like this. Mm -hmm. Because if you try to do it like this, you have a lot of space to to produce spin on that side. That's not where you want the ball to go. You want to go to go there. So it's easier. If you do it like this. There's another thing as well, you need to allow the ball to grip on your paddle, right? So even if you go slow, you can really, if you really hit it well, like the, you catch the ball and then brush it, you can really surprise people as well because they think, ooh, it's like a, not a fast stroke, but if you touch it just right, it has much more spin than they expect, right? Mm. But you, can, you can also just go, as fast as you can, and then that will be a lot of spin as well. But if you do the perfect timing, it's the same spin, but it doesn't look it. 
All right. Yeah, I think this this were a lot of tips. <laughs> I will try it next week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's always a lot, but I think I think as you said, you know, a more compact stroke in the back end, but just exercising this back and forth, back end and forehand uh, strokes. Uh, that's gonna help a lot. It, it helps me as well when I train more on that, and it's gonna make you understand more. You know, like you were doing before, you were trying to go fast with your back end, only your back end. Being able to switch, you're gonna see more of the, the problems you have. You know, what is blocking you? Are you too tense? You know. Uh, are you too prepared for play a forehand? All that stuff you will start realizing. And then maybe, like, I, always when I just, in the beginning, I'm always trying to attack. But then when I switch that off and I'm like, no, no, let's just try to do a fluid motion. Actually, most of the time I'm fine. I can reach almost anything. It's just when I'm really trying to focus and trying to finish the point that I that I tense up too much. But when I'm relaxed, just waiting for the moment, it's it's okay. And like, even if you're relaxed, you can still attack, you know? can attack in a relaxed manner. If, if you look at Proto TVR, for example, that's his whole game. Like he's ma mainly relaxed, but he has this really good thing. Like he tenses up quite well on just one yeah. moment of contact. So yeah. he does that really well, like a lot of pros. All right. Okay. Good. So then I say thank you. Oh, thank you. And I will uh, play a video <laughs> yeah. of this session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. It always comes a bit later because yeah, everything else has, has a bit of priority. Um, this time it's this time it's not so a big problem. I also um, recorded the session, so so at least I can remember on the tips of you without you, seeing me myself. Ah, you recorded your own session in the headset. Yes, with the headset. Ah, cool. All right. Yeah, that's, good. that's good. Yeah. All right. No, you uh, good luck in your match. Okay, thank you. We'll see each other next time. Yes. I will write you uh, when when I will have time next time. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thanks Sorry. a lot for the training. No worries. Good luck. Next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye.